Hi there. Welcome to Bella's Vistas. Please like and subscribe. Share these videos with your friends as you see fit. First of all, we've selected all the star images. If you remember from one of our previous videos, we photographed the stars at 1600 ISO, 20 seconds at f2. I make 90 exposures, so the camera takes a 20 second exposure, takes a 2 second break, starts again. Once we've got the 90 exposures, well then we can go back to the van and get warmed up in this instance because we were really cold by the time we got all the pictures, that's for sure. Here, Photoshop is opening the, the images. Well, I don't know if we'd say that Photoshop is opening them or Lightroom because they're working from Lightroom. We've selected our 90 exposures with the star images and we're opening these images as layers in Photoshop. As you can see here, they're loading. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the layers panel. You can see them. One image opens and it applies them to the layers. Once we've selected all the layers, we can change the mode to lighten. When you set it to lighten, the trails appear. Now you can see some airplanes. You can see Mary indicating the airplanes with the mouse right there. Now what we're going to do is turn off the layers until we find which layers are the airplanes. You'll see here when we shut off a layer, the airplane track disappears. Now, if you look here, looking at each layer, there you can see an airplane going across. As we select one layer to the other, there you see the airplane flying across the background behind the tree. So we want to remove all those airplane images. Now here, you'll see the star trails. There it is, there's our final image. We're back in Lightroom again, looking at the image. Now Mary's going to apply a couple different settings to get the best result we can get from this image and then we'll edit it in Photoshop again. Now we go back to Photoshop and we'll see our image, bring it up to full screen. There it is. It's a pretty impressive image, I think. I really like it. Now we're going to denoise it a little bit with denoise artificial intelligence that's from topaz denoise ai excellent noise reduction program it's not magic well it's a bit of magic but it takes away some of the noise once we get the image denoised if we're satisfied with that then we can continue on working with that image we're ready to print, but well, we're not ready to print. The image is ready to print, but first of all, we've got to profile the printer. Now, previously, I printed these test patches on the 9880. This is with a spider print program. Requires me to measure these 790 patches. Yeah, that's not as easy as you might think. It's a real pain in the neck, and I mean that accurately it really gives me a pain in the neck doing this but I go along painstakingly measuring each and every square on that chart you have to pick it up because if you try sliding that across you're going to scratch the images and you're going to ruin your paper or your ink and you won't get a good result so I put this into high speed mode I just wish I could do it as fast as this but you can't. It's just something that has to be done. You have to do it painstakingly. And when you're done, you get a good quality print. This is the best way that I've found to print. You can, you know, you could print sRGB mode and you could use printer controlling the profile. There's my printer in the background. You can see that uh, time lapse mode on my cell phone makes quick work of this job, but it's a good 40 minutes to measure all those patches and if I make a mistake I have to go back and you can move back one or two spaces here you get a bit of a close-up on what's happening you can see a close-up on the color patches it's really boring it's more boring to do it than it is to watch it being done I'm sure but once again with digital magic it goes pretty quick Every once in a while you'll see I make a mistake and I go back and start a couple measurements over. There I had to just do one. 
And we keep going. It's painstaking work. We're finishing it up now. Wow. There's another one of my images on the monitor. That's the lighthouse in Rose Blanche. Beautiful photograph that I got there. Made another mistake. Whoops. <laughs> and when you get to the end, you hear this little bell go ding, 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 and you know that you're done. And that's so nice when you hear that ring. Now we've got the profiles all measured. Finished measuring the chart. Now we're going to generate a printer profile that we can print from in Photoshop. So we save all the measurements. There's our advanced chart. We make a profile. Save it there. A few little clicks. This is the same kind of thing. You do this job maybe every few months or maybe every six months and you kind of forget even how to do it. Now we open an image in Photoshop and we can go in to select a print and we'll set the printer to print from profiles and you have to remember the name of the profile that you just generated that can be tricky sometimes but the charts have the name of the printer, the ink set, and the settings that you use. You type that in when you're printing the chart. It's all printed right on the bottom so you know the name of your chart and then you'll be ready to go. Okay, now what we've done here is we made a 16 inch wide canvas and we put the profile testing image on the left. That's something that we get from the printer profiling company that I bought the, oh, it's PhotoFix from data color. I've been using that for many many years. Now we've got our images here so we pick the image that we just made of the bristle cone with the star trails. That's the image that we want to print. So we're going to select that image and we're going to paste that image on the same canvas with the printer profile test. So there's, we're ready to print that image, but we're gonna copy it, put it horizontally, select the image, copy it, paste it to the test shot. There you go. Now, now we've got a 16 inch by six inch test print that we can print. And we'll print that, and we're gonna let that dry overnight. And then we'll study it for a day or two. There's the test image right there. I'm pretty happy with that too really happy with it. So now we've got a good profile. We're going to print the image out full size 16 by 20 on ultra premium glossy 250 paper. And it seems kind of funny using a 44 inch printer to print 16 inch prints, but that's the only big printer I have. I have a little uh, tabletop Epson printer and I have the 9880 now don't have the 17 inch printer anymore. That one became uh, a legacy printer. So and there's our print. I'm gonna just let it sit there for a day or two and then we'll frame it up. Just let it get really, really nice and dry. Well, there's the print. We let it dry for a day then we we'll take it down in the finishing room. Here I'm cutting a piece of mat board. This is acid free black mat board with a white core. Do my measurements here, calculate it out. Then I'm going to set up my mat cutter to cut my border all around. Make sure it's going to fit perfectly. This is the backing board. This is CoolTac dry mounting board, acid free archival product. Set it up, it looks good. Line everything up, put the print and the backing in the press and we'll adhere it to the background material. Put it in another press that way, keep it nice and dry. And wow, we're done with the press. Put it on the bench, double check the size for the glass, get out the glass. This is the fun part, I really love cleaning glass. <laughs> so we're polishing the glass, we wanna get all the dust and dirt off everywhere. So much easier to clean it rather than having to take the frame all apart get out something that you left in there. 
and there we go starting to look pretty good now that's the kind of molding that I'm going to use that nice black molding I think that'll be great this is a more so chopper foot operated chopper it's a 300 year old design this machine is pretty old I think it's from 1950 something but here we go chop in the molding does a wonderful job on the corners it really does it's much smoother than a saw now we put a little bit of this maxim frame glue on there special glue to bond the corners smooth it out a little bit and then we put it into the V nailer bam bam it's also foot operated it's really nice does a great job There you go. Clean up the corners with a little brush and some water. Nice and clean. Beautiful job. Now we'll get the picture out. Put the glass. Put it in the frame. Look for dust. Put in all the Fletcher points all around the back. Now we're going to seal it up. Put the double stick tape on the back. There you go. We'll roll out a piece of nice paper on the back of the print. Cut it nice and evenly all around. Special cutting tool to cut the paper on the back. Then we'll just measure it up and we'll use my super cool Bosch electric drill. Really like that. There you go. Put the special stainless steel wire. It's soft strand stainless steel wire. Very strong. Wow, there's the print all ready to go on the wall. I really like it. Wow, what a memorial of our trip that we had. It was just a wonderful time up there. Just exhausted our kitty. Little Miss Kitty's exhausted just from watching. So thanks for visiting Bella's Vistas. Please like and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you hear about our future videos.